Welcome to Caring Community with your hosts, Jay and Diane West. In this community, creative initiatives are welcome. A culture of transformation is normal and miracles are expected. Welcome to Caring Community. Hello, I'm Jay. And I'm Diane. And this is Caring, Caring community. community. So we're back with our guest, Jean Nicole, second show. Who knows, we might have to do 22 shows. You have so many stories, so. <laughs> <laughs> which would be good. We could be broadcast way ahead, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm we, still wearing the same shirt. We are, we are yeah. too. So we didn't, we didn't do any wardrobe change. So sorry. Sometimes we do, we didn't this time. So still have the brownies if you want them. So, <laughs> so you were just sharing about in the last show about your previous life and drugs and alcohol and sex and gambling and all that and your conversion and, and the process time it took you shared how some people have a radical boom, they're gone from and all this stuff. they're free and they're witnessing yeah, for Jesus. Yeah. That wasn't the case yeah. for me. And that's okay. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of people in the Bible, there's a lot of people in, in today's society, they're, they're gradual, it's, it's, it's step by step. It's, the Bible says line upon line, precept upon yeah. precept. It's process, it takes time. It doesn't all just disappear. We're still, we're working out our salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah. I'm still, I'm 50 years saved. I still have issues, you know. You have issues? Huh? Really? What? <laughs> you, you have say? issues? I, have <laughs> ask, I think everybody has issues. my wife in a separate show when I'm not here. She'll let you she'll, she'll tell you about all the issues. You. <laughs> yeah, my wife would say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a list this long. I don't, know. This long. I don't know how long. long I don't know why people is. think if you're a Christian, you don't have issues or problems. Oh, gosh. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they, for some reason, they think. We have a God that can take care of the issues. Yes. But we're more aware of some of the issues where other people would ignore them. Yeah. And we're more aware because we want to walk in righteousness, peace and joy that we just yeah. talked about yeah. on the previous show. Yeah. We, want to, we want to please our Father. We want to love Him. Yes. You know, yeah. it's just like, I want to please her, so I'm going to treat her right. I'm not, I've, never, I've never abused her. I've never beat her. I accidentally rolled her finger up in the, in, in the, in the window once in Colorado. Her hand was in the door and the window went up and she was screaming. <laughs> but, you know, I've never, you know, yeah. Per, yeah. I've never intentionally hit her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's certain things, because I love her. Well, the same thing with our walk with yeah, God. There's, amen. There's, our life changes, and we don't want to do certain things. We want to please our Father. Right. Yeah. Right. So the, the, but the struggle was real. I remember even quitting, like, I was able to quit the drugs and the alcohol, but smoking. So we have a testimony of a guy in our church, and I'm going to have him on sometime. He's had the same issue. He, he did drugs for, he started out at age 12, and I met him at age 22, and he, the day I met him, he was going to commit suicide. And, I, and he, he had five herniated wow. discs in his back and he was in so much pain, he was dragging his leg behind him and I prayed for him and God supernaturally healed the herniated discs and he could run around the room. He still, this is 10 years later now, he still has the five herniated discs, but there's no pain with them. He has MRIs every year. They're still herniated, but God took the pain away. Wow. But my point was, God supernaturally delivered him of drugs and alcohol, but the smoking stayed on for a while. You know? Yeah, so. yeah. For me, it was four years, and even while I was in Africa, I taught at a Bible school, and they believed if I smoked, I wasn't even a Christian. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, there are those that believe that. Yeah. And I love Jesus with all my heart. I believe oh, yeah. it, had I died then in those it's, first it's four often, years, I would have been with Jesus. It's often interesting too that some of the. I don't mean this disrespectfully, please understand, but some of the biggest, largest preachers, fattest preachers in the world will condemn smoking, but they don't condemn eating. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have that problem. You don't have that problem, yes. <laughs> Some of us do, some of us don't. You know, so anyway, yeah. So, uh, that, that's been my one. I've, I've probably lost a thousand pounds in my lifetime. <laughs> you know, I yeah, gain weight, I lose weight. I gain yeah. weight, I lose weight. I gain, you know, so if you're in that, I get it. You know, it's like, for yeah, me, that's, that's my issue. Your, that's one of my yeah, big issues, you know? That's strong. Yeah. And, uh, and the older I get, the less active I am, too. Yeah. So it's just, you know, but we'll get there. Yeah. Praise God. One of these days. Praise God. Yeah. If I would just cut off my hair like you did, I'd probably lose two or three more pounds. So. <laughs> 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 or give blood. You lose a pound. If you give a, if you give a yeah. pint of blood, you lose a pound oh, of weight. So I hate needles. Oh. Oh, well, you wouldn't that like was probably, what you did. That was probably a good thing. Show your arms, you know, yeah. you've had so many 
I know. Oh, this I this week alone, there's so stuff. many blood draws and everything else. So it looks. It looks and you look amazing, though, Diane. I mean, yeah. She does how do you amazing. feel? Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. I mean, I feel a little bit better since I've had some of those infusions. Yeah. I mean, God is so faithful. You know, I, I look and, back and, over the and years. And we don't look at medical as being lack of faith. Right. No, not at all. We not both wear all. glasses. God, that's medical. Yeah, yeah, I just went to the eye doctor. I got to get some now. Yeah, see? And that requires a prescription. Oh, Have you ever been to the dentist? Yes. Have yes, you ever had a procedure at the yeah. dentist? Yes, yes, So, yes, yes. So yeah. the point is, if you go to the dentist and you have a cavity filled or root canal or tooth pulled or whatever, yeah. that's no different than fighting cancer. Yeah, well, a little bit different, but... Well, it's still medical. But, you yeah, got to do it. It's you medical. Gotta, right. But faith. I mean, it doesn't negate our faith. Correct. But God uses his doctors, too. It doesn't negate our yeah. faith. Right. right. Exactly. Um, and I've seen, even See. when I, ha I actually had LASIK surgery in 2006. And when I went to have LASIK surgery, we did it, at, we did it right before a healing conference. And I did it with Randy Clark's son, Josh. And we joked around and said, well, if it goes bad, we can just get prayer and get healed afterwards. <laughs> well, and you think about the Bible. Luke was a doctor, right? In the Bible? Yeah, Luke, wrote, physician, Luke wrote yeah. two books of the Bible. He wrote yeah. Luke and what else? Acts. Acts, okay. Yeah. So Paul took Luke with him throughout the book of Acts. You know why? Do you, have you ever heard this? No, I haven't so heard this. So Paul <laughs> took Luke with him throughout the book of Book of Acts because Paul was always getting beat up and he needed a doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, it, it's true. He was. Yeah, he did suffer a few beatings. Right. And I mean, I think of what's happening in the world today, and you know, people think that we're getting persecuted, and I think we're just in the beginning of a little bit of shaking. Right. Yeah. And, it's and, not even close. It's yeah, even I don't close. think so. And the other thing is, you can't have a worldwide king of viewpoint looking at what's going only going on in America. I know you have to think the bigger picture. Right, and I a think. lot of people just don't. It's yeah. ridiculous, yeah. yeah. So I would like to go, I'm always intrigued by your time, and I know it was before we met, but tell us something cool that happened in Mozambique. In Mozambique? Yeah. Besides our wedding. Um, yeah, besides the 777 mm -hmm. wedding. Yeah. I was thinking of the engagement too, but that's another story for another day. Well, um, a lot of people are, a lot of, more people, I think, more people are, the other guy you worked with in South Africa is well known, but the Heidi and Roland are pretty well known. And people yeah, like I, I have a Heidi story okay. that I could share. With Heidi this Baker. is the one, yeah, Heidi Baker. So this <clears> is the one that really, I, I'm still scratching my head on this one. Hmm. Um, so we were doing flood relief in Morambala in February of 2007. And it was before we got married. I had just gotten engaged to my wife. Flood and relief in terms of they had had a flood? Yeah, they had had a massive flood in the Zambezi River, and the communities were up. Thousands upon thousands of people lost their home. So we drove about 20 hours south of Pemba um, and with one of our churches, and we stayed at uh, a mission compound down there and connected with our pastor and did flood relief. So we brought food, rice, and beans into areas where there were refugee camps. Mm -hmm. They were literally living in grass houses. Wow. So their houses were made of grass. They were eating these brown balls that they got out of the ground that were pods. And so there was no nutrition. Living in grass houses, literally, that's all they had. And whatever clothes that they had no on their water. back. Because no, no, no water. water. And they had lost everything. Mm -hmm. And I remember one day doing medical missions, and my friend and I stumbled upon a guy with gangrene on his leg. Oh, no. And we took a, almost a half a tube of triple antibiotic, put it on it, wrapped it up, gave him some antibiotics, and told him to take double dose, and prayed over him in a hurry because they were telling us we're going. We're saying, no, this guy's going to his, lose his leg if we don't administer this. And we never saw him. We don't know what happened to him. But going back to the story with Heidi, um, we, on our way to an outreach one day, we just stumbled upon a school and we decided we would just do an open air meeting. And so Heidi, the way she is, just starts preaching the gospel, calls up the sick and asks if there's any deaf. And so this one boy comes up and literally his ear and everything is it's like kind of like all deformed and he can't hear out of the ear. Mm -hmm. And I'm standing right next to her when this happened. She prays for him and, and of course covers his good ear completely and begins to whisper, Jesus, Jesus. 
and he begins to repeat what she says. Now, the guy has no ear, no ear drum, but he's hearing. Wow. How can that be? I'm still scratching my head. Wow. So that's one of the, the... We just shared yesterday, we did a video at home because we're going to do a four-week series at Kingdom Encounters about Supernatural. And she shared a testimony right here in town of a similar thing where I did a healing service, prayed for a man who was deaf in one ear. He covered his, now it wasn't no eardrum, God, like you said, nothing. but he was totally deaf. And he covered his good ear, spoke some words, you know, he sent him back, his ear was open. And it was like, I would say it was probably open 80%. And then the next morning as he was singing during church, it opened up the, the other 20%. And that was probably t at least 12 years ago, and he's had his hearing ever since, you know. Wow. And so we've seen, personally, a number of, you know, totally, total deaf ears just open, open up, you know. Yeah. And, and, and we know it's God that does it. We know it's God, right. you know. Yeah. And it's I'm going to tell you, every time, when I pray for ears or eyes, that's like a scary one, you know. Because you're praying in front of a lot of people, and you're believing something's going to happen. And you know there's a lot of doubters in the crowd, yeah, yeah. you know, and then there's a lot of people who are wondering in the crowd, and there's a lot of people just kind of, oh, okay, right. what's going to happen here, you know, and God, I mean, I've seen so many, just in America, all my prayer, you've been overseas a lot, yeah. but people have asked me, they said, how is it you pray for all these people in, you know, in other countries? I said, they're not in other countries, it's all, every it's one of my healings America. has yeah, been no, in America. God's healing, when I was with Randy Clark, and we, we traveled mostly in America, Right. And God heals, in it's the same God that heals right. in America that heals in Brazil right. or South Africa or right. Mozambique. It's right. the, we, we serve the same God, and He's the one that heals. We were at a convention, a political convention down in Kansas one time, and a friend of mine was with me, and we prayed for a deaf guy. And there was, it, it was a convention after the election. A lot of people were drinking, shouting. Some were crying because they were losing. Others were shouting because they were winning. There was a lot of noise. And we met a wait staff who was totally deaf and here. I prayed for him. And then I stood behind him and I named colors of the rainbow in random order, okay? And he got every, he faced that way and I walked behind, I stood behind him. But what he didn't know was I took a step back each time, wow. okay? So at the end, he was still getting every color right. And I was 12 feet behind him in a, in a very noisy atmosphere. He got every one of them right and his I ear was open I think you need up. to pray for me before the show's over <laughs> or after the show. Okay. I'm, you know, I have a little bit from my previous days, my BC life before Christ, um, I listened I to a lot of, of that loud BC rock. life. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like a, sounds like a cartoon or something. <laughs> BC life. I listened to a lot of loud music and went to a lot of rock concerts. So yeah, pray for we'll okay, have to we have can you do pray that for afterwards. me afterwards. So you know, it's just, and then the guy, poor guy, he was horrible at geography. He said, "I'm going to come to your church next week." I said, "I live in Omaha. It's three hours north there." He said, "No, nah, I can't be." He emailed me, goes, "It is three hours north. I'm not coming." <laughs> You don't want to drive three hours one way and three hours back. <laughs> That's commitment. So wow, in yeah. America, yeah. yeah so you went him. to South Africa for a while, a yeah. season, ten years. Ten years we were in South Africa. Tell us the story As I there. Said, so we pioneered the Children's Village. Um, well, and here's the anniversary story. Um, seven, it was seven 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 fourteen. Okay. So it was our seventh anniversary, um, and. Um, we hosted a team from a gentleman that you, maybe you don't know, George M. Banoff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He had a team of mm -hmm. 36 people that had just got kicked out of Pemba. They arrived in Pemba and they said all of a sudden, no, your visas are no good, uh, you have to leave. Oh, wow. So they actually let them stay that night and then they phoned us and said, hey, can you host Georgian's team? And my wife and I are the directors of the base, of course. We say yes, but we're right in the middle of our annual youth conference, and mm. it's right around July oh, wow. 4th. And wow. so we said, sure, come on. But at the same time, there's this festival going on in Nelspret, where we were living, called Inabas. And every hotel, and every bed and breakfast, everything is booked. Mm. Everything is booked. And we're like, we got no room to host this team. And we're having a youth conference. And when we have a conference, it's not like in America. We not only feed them three meals a day, 
but we put them up also. Oh, wow. And we host the entire conference. So we got Bible school. We got our, our feeding program where we have a preschool and we have a sewing room. And so we just throw mats on the floor. People sleep all over. They sleep at people's houses in the community. We have a spare house in the community and we had Michael's Children's Village and we're hosting over 200 people. That's a lot of people. So think about it. You're feeding them too. Right. And now you get another 36 Westerners. Westerners, not our, our brothers from South Africa, but Westerners who are used to comfort. Oh. oh. Yeah, they want hamburgers and everything else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we're feeding them African South. So we put them up at the children's village. We have one house. We had 26 women in this house. Oh. And there's two bathrooms, oh, wow. 26 women. We had them everywhere. And the guys, we put them up at the Bible school, um, you know, and the mattresses are like this thick. And you ever watch, <laughs> I gotta interrupt you. Have you ever watched the Andrew Womack, you gotta watch the Andrew Womack video of his ministry set, center and everything else. So he intentionally built it with a hundred women's bathrooms. Because <laughs> of all the conferences. So. Okay, I'm going somewhere with this story. I'm just building okay. it up a little bit, just so okay. you can That's see fine. what it was like. I mean, so this, we said yes. And you know, God is just looking for people to say yes. Yeah. People who are available. So we're hosting this, this conference and then it's a inconvenience, it's last minute. But we said, yes, we'll do it, Lord. And uh, wow, I mean, just thinking, I, I'm just thinking of the story and I'm, I'm taken aback because um, I realize that my life, it's not my own anymore. I'm alive for him. All right. And so the conference goes on, we finish the conference and then Monday's our anniversary, 7-7. Seven, seven. We're exhausted from having the conference for four days. We are wiped out. And one of our senior leaders, Pastor Mabila, he talked us into taking Georgian's team to his church about an hour and a half, two hours away. Mm. And so we went to spur the South African version of fast food, not necessarily fast food, but a good burger steak joint. Okay. And so we went there and, and we had two, three minivans, taxis that we took the team in, but I was taking George in and another one of the leaders, Andrew, um, came with me in my truck. And I, I was like, to be honest, I didn't want to go. It's our anniversary. I yeah. wanted to spend it with my right. wife, right. but we committed to do this and like, okay, we're going to sacrifice. And, and then at this meal, like everybody, they wanted to do their gift shopping and everything. And it was a souvenir place and yeah. you're just taking so long. And I, I'm like, just to be honest, home. I'm annoyed. I'm yeah. like, let's just go. I said, come on, George and Andrew, we're just going to go. The team will meet us there. They don't have to follow us. The taxi drivers know how to get there. So we get there and there's like a stop and go. So in South Africa, they have things called stop and goes where only one lane of traffic is going. So they can be five minutes or they can be 45 minutes. You just never right. know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we get to the stop and go, we go through, we didn't wait too long. Maybe it was only five minutes or so. So it was good. We go through and I'm just driving along. And then all of a sudden I see a body lying on the side <coughs> of the road. Wow. Um, wow. Immediately pull over. It's a, a little girl maybe six or seven years old. Um, there's no breath in her. Oh, wow. Um, lifeless. Like, I'm not an EMT, so to this, I don't know, was she dead? Was she not dead? We don't yeah. know. Was she just unconscious? So, I, I, I mean, I'm not going right. to embellish the story. Right. And we I mean, we appreciate I don't know. that. We don't like to exaggerate stories. So, either. I don't know, but we got there at the right time. We were the first ones there. And George and Andrew and I, we got out and we just began to lay hands on her and pray and speak life. And after about five or seven minutes, it goes like this, and all of a sudden, she came to. About wow. 10 or 15 minutes later, the EMTs come, and they weren't too qualified or trained, this guy. Actually, the guy with us, Andrew, was saying, no, don't do that, lay their head like this so they don't choke on their, t she doesn't choke on her tongue. Mm -hmm. But she came to, all her vitals were, were, were good, so she was alive, and, 
And, um, you know, so we did some follow-up with her, and she ended up in the hospital in Nels Britton, a town where we were in. We went to visit her, Pastor Mabila and I, we got to pray for her and her mom. Um, she, she was partial, still partially paralyzed afterwards. Oh. So she's still alive to this day, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. But had we not gone, yeah. Yeah. maybe that right. girl would be dead. Maybe right. not, right. Right. but maybe. So we have to believe that, that God foresaw this. Mm -hmm. We got there. We left early because we were because I was annoyed. Right. Yeah. I mean, I was like, let's just go. So even when we're not feeling like doing something, we we just do it. Well, I gave you an example. This, this happened several years ago. A pastor, of one of the largest churches in town, called me on the phone on a January cold January morning. It was snowing, and he said, "Jay, I've got a I've got a guy at Emmanuel Hospital." I heard that testimony in the story. I was li listening to the yeah. episode for, yeah. our, for our listeners, and this guy was in a coma. I didn't want to go up there. Yeah. It's a long ways across town. It's snowing, but I went. I did, really didn't want to go, but I went. You know, and I ended up praying for the guy. We'll go into the whole story. But the next day he woke up from the coma. And then I went to see him. And the doctor said to me, he said, we, I've never, I've been here 20 years. I've never seen anybody wake up from this type of coma that fast before. He said it had to be God, you know. Yeah. I mean, the guy woke up 20, less than 24 hours after I prayed for him. Yeah. And I had a similar thing down in Victoria, Texas, where I prayed for a guy who was in a diabetic coma. And while I prayed for him, his leg was, it was, his legs were flat. And in the middle of my prayer, his leg comes up like this. He's laying in his bed and goes back down, you know, movement. And I, I remember sharing with the person who was with me, did you see that? He said, no. And I said, well, you got to pray with your eyes open, okay? Yeah. You wouldn't want a surgeon operating on you with his eyes closed. Yeah, so yeah, amen. No, that's what we were taught in that <laughs> ministry, yeah. ministry school. So I always pray with my eyes open with the sick and everything, because yeah. you'll see things, yeah. you know. And I said, tell his wife, it'll give him, well, he woke up the next day too, you know, and went home and was well. Um, so I want to pray for your ear. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to tell you why. I was waiting. I felt like God said, wait. Yeah. Okay, so which ear is it that you're having? It's for? actually both. My, but which my one hearing, has the most? Um, I say? don't know which one. I haven't been tested okay, so or anything. Since you, here's what's been happening since me. So lots of times I get a, get, I get a, um, uh, a feeling in my body. You yeah, know? that happens with me too. Okay, I'll get a pain or whatever. I've, I, I prayed for a guy in, in, he was a vineyard pastor in Los Angeles, and I got a sharp pain in my left knee, and I said, God's, and I pointed at the guy, I said, God's healing your knee, you had, a, you had an accident 40 years ago, and you had trauma, and the pain's disappearing right now, and he was, he'd, been a, he'd been in a car accident, and his pain went away instantly, and he later invited Jason and I to come back, and we went to his vineyard church in Barstow, California, we went there, and ministered, and it was just because I had a, what I would call sympathy pain. So ever since you've been talking about your ear, my left ear has been crackling. You left, so oh, wow. maybe it's my so life I, that's And worse. I've been asking guys, said, don't let this go away. Keep doing, let it crackle, because yeah. it doesn't yeah. crackle. Yeah. So it's been crackling, yeah. and it's kind of itchy, yeah. kind of itchy and crackling in my left ear ever since you said that. Yeah. And I didn't, want, I didn't want to ignore it. I just wanted to wait till yeah. God's timing. So like we're near the end okay. of the broadcast. We have five minutes. Right. So I'm going to pray for your ear, and then we're both going to pray for other people's ears and, right. and issues that are watching, okay? And let's Amen. just see what God does, okay? Amen. And yeah, I'm not like trying fun. to negate anything. Yeah. I pray for a lot of people. So I pray for a lot of people, and they get well. Like the, both, both comas, they got, they got well the next day, yeah. okay? Jesus prayed for, what, 10 lepers? Mm -hmm. yeah. And they were healed as they went. Remember that? Yeah. Remember yeah. that story? Only one come back. And one came back. You. But here's the interesting <laughs> thing on that story. You know, they, they walked away from it, and we're not told how far they walked. It might have been a block or two, but what if it was a day's journey? Yeah. Okay, so they walked a day's journey this way, and at the same time, Jesus walked a day's journey that way. So now they're two days apart. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We don't know for sure, yeah, we don't. but only one went back. So Jesus prayed. There were a lot of people, they were healed instantly, but other people were healed as they went. Yeah. Okay, and so I'm good with, I've seen people get well 24, 48 hours later. I've seen people get well right in front of me. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not giving a, I'm, I'm, I'm letting my, the audience know that we're going to yeah. pray for you. Amen. we got four minutes left. I'm going to pray for his ear, and I still feel it, so okay. I just feel like... It might, it might not just be for me. It might be for somebody watching That's what I'm saying. This. We're going to pray for yeah. other people, too. Yeah, I believe so that, that can could we be just, okay. Can we do that now? Absolutely. Are you okay with that? Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, so I'm just going to... It's too hard to move with our microphones on and everything else to actually we'll touch believe you. faith so I'm just gonna, yeah. I'm gonna send my hand towards you yeah. so father I lift up Thank Gene you. right now too and they come against his hearing issues mm -hmm. in both his ears but specifically the left ear yes, 
Yes. Because that's where you've been having this, I've had felt nothing in my right ear the whole time. It's all been in my left ear. It could just be a reminder, but it could be that that's the area that needs the most improvement. And so we speak healing to his ears right now mm -hmm. and the difficulty that he's had growing uh, because of sound infusion years ago with yes. hard rock music and loud music or whatever. And we rebuke uh, all pain. We rebuke all uh, inability to hear correctly. We rebuke mm -hmm. anything that's, that's damaged his eardrums and the ear canals. Yes. And we release healing into his body right now. We release life into his ears mm -hmm. so that he can hear clearly yeah. and, and just perfectly, just like Amen. Better than the laser surgery was on his eye. Amen. We just ask for restoration Amen. right now. Yes, Lord. Right now. And for those who are watching, we yes. speak yeah. healing to your ears yeah. right now. If you have ear problems or eye or problems. Or deafness. Even the story with Heidi, I just realized that I shared the story about deafness. Right. So God that's is what, highlighting That's what something. triggered it. Yeah. And so we speak hearing, uh, healing. healing to ears right now. And... The Bible says you lay hands on the sick and see recover. Put your hand on your, on your bad ear right yes, now. Sir. If you have a bad ear, I'm just, I don't have a bad ear, but put your hand on a bad ear right now, and in Jesus' name, we, declare, we declare that yeah. ears are opening up right now. And we believe that the supernatural is happening. Yes, and even if you watch this as a tape delay on my YouTube channel yes, later, Lord. on KPAO later, and yes, it airs Lord. because it's going to air weeks from now, uh, we pray that... Hearing God be does restored. supernatural right yes, now. Yes, Lord, right now. Is there any way that you, we always say there's a miracle when you check, you know. Yeah. know Chris For me, it's, it's, it's when there's a lot of noise in the atmosphere, like I won't hear somebody. Yeah. There's no way I could really tell right okay. now, All but right. I, I would know later. I would send in a testimony. And if that's you and you're watching and God does touch you, please send Jay a testimony. You know, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit yeah. of prophecy. Right, that's from and Revelation And it opens 19. up the heavens for him to do I'm it again. I'm still hearing And it right builds now. our I still faith. Have the so right somebody now. needs a healing. Right. So we command that deaf, dumb, and blind spirit to go from your body in Jesus' name. Ears be open. Ears be restored right now in Jesus' name. Right. In Thank Jesus' you. name. Thank you. So it's been so awesome having yeah, it's, you here. Thank you for having me. It's been so two fun hanging shows, out with you. It's been you. fun. We could do 22 shows. Yeah, we could keep going, yeah, but we could keep two going. is enough. They're At probably least, getting yeah, tired of me probably, by now. Yeah. Anyway. No. Well, they see us all the time. <laughs> At least it's somebody They see doing. her all the time. <laughs> but I haven't hit her yet. But you know what? What? I see Jesus when I see you guys. Oh, I mean, you guys are shining for Jesus. And what you're doing, even with these shows, it's, you are showing that you care for people. And in this world and what's going on today, people just want to be loved and feel cared for. Um, there's the saying, um, people don't care how much you know so until you they know, know how much you care, care, care for them. Right. So, so thanks for being on thank the show. Thank you for caring. Thanks for hearts. coming to the caring community. We still have brownies. God bless you. <laughs> See you next I'm, time. I might have one of those now. Bye-bye. <laughs>